Hi hey everybody! Hello! It's Thursday, April 4th. There's a new set out. That's why you're here. I know why you're here. Because it's 2099, everybody. So happy to see you all. Um, I am crossing my fingers and hoping everything goes well today. The very last stream I did, the internet was not cooperating. And that was a fun couple of weeks. But uh, I think it should be okay today. I really hope. Uh, hey everybody in chat! Uh, we got a new set! Uh, we are gonna have fun with this. Very exciting. Legendary 2099 is out as of yesterday. I was unable to uh, find a copy in the wild yesterday, but the wonderful folks at Upper Deck were nice enough to send me one. And now it's here. So thank you so much, uh, Upper Deck team, for this. I really appreciate it. And now I get to uh, show it off for all you guys. Hi. I'm happy to be on the TV. I don't know why I waved up here. Hi. <laughs> all right. And I hope you guys get it soon. Um, Thanks to uh, thanks to Marcus in the Discord, the entire set was spoiled yesterday, so we all got to talk about it and look through it. I'm still gonna do my unboxing and go over it so we can talk about it a little more, but I'm very excited to play it as well. There's some really cool stuff in here. Yeah, we're gonna go over this, go over all the cards. Shouldn't take too long, it is a small box, so only 100 cards, uh, but uh, we will go over it, and then we're gonna play probably a couple of games. I probably don't have time for four games. However, <laughs> exactly, you hope so. There's, there's one ISP in, in 2099, and it's Alchemax. So it's got to work, right? Or it doesn't at all. I forget how it works. Um, anyway, um, let's do it. First things first, a quick announcement. The Legendary Legacy Arcade featured format will end on Saturday. Only a couple more days. I can't wait to reveal what the format for that is. And uh, I will be putting some cards from 2099 into that. So that's why I'm giving a few more uh, days so hope you look forward to that. By the way, thank you so much, Chitio Gaming, for the tier one sub, 38 months, and Jolt, 20 months, another sub. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate that uh, after jumping back in here after a while. All right, so let's go back, by the way. This box order is absolutely incredible. Let's go over it. I like how this expansion's name is Just Numbers. Yeah, it's a year. It's finally the year. Is it the first? Until the, uh, what is it, the uh, 16, what is it, 1608? Is that the other year of uh, Marvel? I don't think there's any other years. 1609 but uh, if they do one that'll be another one but yeah so far no numbers for the title exclusively do any have any numbers in it I guess Secret Wars volume 1 and volume 2 but not important uh, 1602 I couldn't remember the year <laughs> all right me too um, all right so uh, let's get started with this unboxing so we can get to the playthroughs before we run out of time here is the box it has some awesome box art a lot of us were guessing who was in this set based on what we saw now that we know I'm going oh that's of course they're right on there on the box we got the side, Legendary 2099, the box on the side and the back, barcode, and then here's the back of the box right here. Everything has changed in a 2099 that is rife with violence and corporate corruption in this new Legendary expansion. The world has changed, but the Sinister Six, which has long been a force of evil, remains. New heroes will have to face new formidable foes bent on world domination. Join Spider-Man 2099, Doctor... No, nope, <laughs> Ghost Rider... <laughs> Doctor's over here. Ghost Rider 2099 and Doctor Doom in the fight to save the world. Discover Marvel 2099 and see what awaits you in this dystopian society. Boy, I'm going to be saying 2099 a lot during this stream. Like right now. The Marvel 2099 expansion includes the following. 100 playable cards, 5 new heroes, 2 new adapting masterminds, 2 new villain groups, 4 new schemes, and a rule sheet. So let's open it up and get to those things. I like to go for this plastic hanger in the back because it makes it so much easier to open. Well, I lied because it wasn't actually... It didn't rip off the plastic this time. Yes, it's a Doctor Doom hero, Doctor Doom 2099. If you want to read the 2099 comics, it's kind of hard because not all of them are on Marvel Unlimited. But you can find places to read them or get the Omnibus if you want. Anyway, let's open this guy up and see how it's packaged because that's always super fun. There it is. Oh no, my rule sheet is bent. Let's ignore that. I think we'll still be able to read it. So move that over. And then there's our two bricks of cards there. Here's the... Does anybody have any cool things to do with these? I have so many, I have no idea what to do with these. They're just in the boxes. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, pan through the cards because... By the way, if you want to see all these cards right now... Hey, thanks so much for the resub, Captain Metroidica, who I'm sure is waiting for his set to come in so we can get this stuff up on legendarycardgame.com. But... If you want to see all these cards right now without waiting for me to show them to you immediately, you could type in exclamation new cards and you'll get a link to the gallery where they are all up already. But you should just wait and watch. Well, let me look at them real quick because that's more fun. All right. Yes, recycling them is good. I mean, if I don't use them. I like. I mean, like recycling them to use as something else, you know? All right, so here's the other pack of cards. 
I always love to see how these are put together. Here's Doom's Rare. I gotta move it down because I have the focus set this time because it's better for my close-up cameras. So there's Doom 2099. Oh, these cards look even better in person. I always say that, but it's always true. Ravage 2099 right here. <laughs> oh, that's cool of you, Snatch Cat. Well, here they are. They look so good. And then there's uh, the Alchemax Executives, which is one of the adapting masterminds. We've got Alchemax Enforcers, one of the villain groups here, followed by Acer of Alchemax, the uh, false Asgardians here, and then become president of the United States. Can't wait to check that one out and uh, subjugate Earth with mega corporations, the other scheme. The second one here. Oh, by the way, the masterminds, the adapting masterminds do have epic sides, which is pretty cool. This is the first playable Doctor Doom. It is Victor Von Doom. So there you go. We got Spider-Man 2099. He does not have the entire two-cost mechanic or at all. He has uh, one two-cost common, but that's it. Then we've got a Ghost Rider 2099. I'm really excited to play his hero set. We got some cool mechanics in here that I'll need my little tokens for. Um, we got Hulk 2099, who was not Bruce Banner. What I love about these uh, 2099 cards is Devin has been nice enough to put little bios for all the heroes that most of us don't know on the bottoms of the cards in the flavor text. So we'll see what that is. Electro 2099 from the Sinister Six 2099. Ravage was in the last pack, but he's there. He's playable. And Goblin, Dr. Octopus, who's actually an octopus. That's amazing. Uh, Venom. That's what I said that I had fits that it's Miguel would not follow suit with that. Vulture, Sandwoman, and then two more schemes. Let's go check this out. I'm going to be playing at least two games today, Kumquat. Hopefully more. Here's the rule sheet. Like I said, if you want to read the whole thing on your own, you can put an exclamation, uh, new cards. But let's read it together. I'm going to zoom out or in. I think I'm zoomed in. So let's just go ahead and read it together right here. Starting at the front. In case I missed anything from last time, here we go. The fan favorite Marvel 2099 comics reveal the dark future ruled by sinister, all-powerful corporations like Alchemax. These megacorps... Nope, megacorps. Ruthless, ruthlessly, ruthlessly... Oh, jeez. Slow down. Okay, ruthlessly exploit workers into endless servitude. Can you tell I'm excited? Dueling their minds with prop dulling their minds with propaganda and vapid at cyberspace entertainments. Unrelenting industrial pollution warps the land into a noxious hellscape. Cybernetically enhanced enforcers brutally crush any resistance to corporate rule. <sighs> Ancient heroes like the Avengers and Asgardians are worshipped by the desperate as distant memories. We've got Marvel Knights and Spider Friends here as the two teams in this set, along with Unaffiliated, which is not a team. But now a cutting-edge generation of heroes rises to resist. Working in the shadows, new champions reclaim the bygone mantles of Ghost Rider, Spider-Man, and the Hulk. They build resistance networks, undermine corporate rule, infiltrate cyberspace, and sometimes just smash. Alchemax executive Paul Philip Ravage starts to question his corporation's motives. In return, he is betrayed and mutated into a horrifying, brutal new form. The original... Yeah, the dist it's, not, it's honestly scary how not far away 2099 is. The original Doctor Doom, torn through time, resolves to crush the Mega Corpse himself, reclaim his kingdom, and restore the rule of his own Iron Fist. Now we get to some new keywords. I'm going to drink some water first because there's a lot to remember here. I could lose fast to play more games. I'm not going to lose fast on purpose. I might just lose fast anyway. The art is so cool. Um, in the Discord, I posted the uh, Instagrams of the artists who worked on this set. I'll try to dig that up again for you. I don't think... I, did I pin it? It would be really, really cool and smart and awesome of me if I pinned it but I don't know if I did. Uh, no, I didn't pin it. I'll find it later. All right, let's check out the new keywords. First one is Cyber Mods for Heroes. In 2099, weak organic flesh is quickly becoming obsolete. Desperate heroes work with underground hacker docs to augment their bodies with cybernetic enhancements, unleashing raw power. This is represented... The rules are up on the UD website. Oh, yeah, they aren't up that fast. Yeah, go to the... um. Uh, type in search for upper deck rules rules on uh, just Google that and uh, you'll get the list very cool I could have looked it up there anyway unleashing raw power cybernetic enhancements unleashing raw power this is represented by the new cyber mod keyword some heroes say things like cyber mod tech draw a card you may use a cyber mod ability only if you have a card of the listed hero class in your victory pile oh, you assume there's gonna be a next art bracket there probably will be <laughs> eventually uh, oh yeah speaking of brackets let me finish this section I'll talk about that for a second um, likewise, you can you can use Cyber Mod ranged, ranged, ranged. You get plus two only if you have at least three ranged cards in your victory pile. The heroes that use Cyber Mods have ways to send cards undercover. This can help you put the right cards into your victory pile to activate 
your cyber mods. Note, undercover means to put a card in your victory pile. This keyword first debuted in Legendary Black Widow. It actually first debuted in Shield. A lot of people pointed that out. Not a big deal. Let's move on. The cyber tech that infused Hulk 2099 with gamma rays lets him push past his no, push his pain under the surface, channeling it into even more st or ever more strength and rage. Accordingly, Hulk 2099 can send wounds undercover and use cyber mod wound abilities in the same way. Um, Ryan did confirm, Ryan at Upper Deck did confirm that wounds in your victory pile sent undercover do still give you one victory point at the end of the game, just like heroes sent undercover would. All right, keep going. Um, what if it's amazing, Kumquat? Go check out my video on that. Uh, cyber mods for enemies. The corporations, bounty hunters, and enforcers of 2099 also enhance their abilities with deadly cybernetic tech often it's scavenged from uh, captured victims. Some enemies say things like Cyber Mod, Covert, 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 this gets plus three attack. Villains and Masterminds use their Cyber Mod abilities only while there are cards of the listed hero classes in the escape pile. If a villain escapes, you know what I could do? I could do this, I just realized. Whoop. Ah, it's not wide enough, I guess kind of. If a villain escapes the city with a captured hero, no, I didn't get that far. Yes, likewise, a villain says fight cyber mod tech KO one of your heroes. Use that ability only if there is a tech card in the escape pile. If a villain escapes in the city with a captured hero, that hero and the hero card stays in the escape pile and can help activate all enemies' cyber mods. Uh, yes, cyber mod enemies also have ways to put hero cards directly into the escape pile, helping activate cyber mods. Faded Future. Marvel 2099 shows a chilling vision of what could come to pass if the characters of Marvel Universe. The Marvel Universe don't change Earth's fate. Sometimes fate can seem inevitable until someone finds the courage to turn the future in a new direction. This is represented by the new Faded Future keyword. When you play a card of Faded Future, you may put it on the bottom of your deck. This helps you draw the card again more quickly than if you discarded it, waited for your discard pile to shuffle into a new deck, then waited to draw the card. You can predict the future of when you'll see it again. You can also increase the future, the, the chance that you will draw multiple Faded Future cards in the same powerful hand once you get to the bottom of your deck. I've heard that this is some real, there's some really cool combos with that. I'll jump back down here. Sending your heroes to other places. If you play a card, it sends itself undercover or to the bottom of the hero deck, and it sends itself undercover or to the bottom of the, your deck with Faded Future or another place, you still get its attack, recruit, and other abilities. If you played a strength card and send it somewhere this way, send it somewhere this way, you still played a strength card, so you can still use a strength draw card superpower ability. However, it's no longer one of your heroes or heroes you have. Good to know. I'm going to have to check back on that because it's going to trip me up a couple of times. Just with uh, favorite Faded Future and Cyber Mods, there's some abilities like on Spy Spidey2099 that will send it undercover and then immediately it can activate its own Cyber Mod ability. Okay. Uru Enchanted Weapons are a returning keyword from Fear itself. So what's cool about the rules for uh, Uru Enchanted Weapons here? You know what? I liked it better just doing this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it back. And what's cool about this is this is the first time we've seen it written with the hero terminology versus the villain terminology, as in uh, fear itself, but it works the same way. All right, to corrupt the peoples of the people of 2099's faith in ancient heroes, Alchemax creates false Asgardian gods. They combine nanotech and nuclear fusion to engineer jaw-dropping weapons that mimic the power of the fabled Mjolnir. These use the Uru Enchanted Weapons keyword, which first appeared in Legendary Fear itself. When you try to fight an enemy that has some number of Uru Enchanted Weapons, reveal that many cards from the top of the villain deck. That enemy immediately gains plus attack equal to the total victory points of all the cards you revealed. Give me a, um, give me a Mjolnir in chat <laughs> if you like Uru Enchanted Weapons. If you have at least as many, or just a hammer if you can't find it, at least as many attack points as the enemy's improved attack, use them and defeat the enemy as normal. If you don't have enough attack points, you don't defeat this enemy, you lose all your attack points, and you can't use fight anymore this turn. You can still play cards and recruit, you just can't fight or heal wounds. Whether you defeat that enemy or not, put all the cards you revealed from the villain deck on the bottom of that deck in random order. This is the one I always forget, so I'll try not to forget that this time. Once you start to fight an enemy, you can't play any more cards until after that fight is complete. Someone brought the hammer down. Perfect, thank you. Um, remember to generate all the attack you can before you fight them. Least favorite keyword, says Mr. Dollar. <laughs> Thank you, Snatch Cat. Flipping cards for Uru Intended Weapons cannot end the game. If you run out of cards in the villain deck, shuffle the cards you've revealed so far and keep revealing. If there are no cards left in the villain deck, there is no attack bonus. That's a great fail sound. Fight or fail. Travel says top three favorite keyword. Ooh, this is getting spicy. 
fight or fail. Enemies with Uru enchanted weapons sometimes also say things like fight or fail, KO one of your heroes. Do the fight or fail effect if you successfully fight that enemy or if you try to fight them, but the Uru enchanted weapons attack bonus causes you to fail. You can't try to fight an enemy unless you have enough attack points to match its printed attack points. All right, here we go. Adapting Masterminds, the most hype for me, return. The Sinister Six 2099 and Alchemax executives aren't just a single mastermind. Instead, they are teams of archvillains working together, adapting to use different master strikes and abilities. These adapting masterminds also appeared in Legendary Shield. What's cool about the ones in this set, they not only have unique art, but there's epic size. It's very exciting. A normal mastermind has a mastermind card and four mastermind tactic cards. An adapting mastermind instead has just four or six mastermind tactic cards. Whichever tactic is currently on the top of the stack of tactics counts as the current mastermind card. Keep all of their tactics in a face-up stack. Use only the rules on that top card, ignoring the rest of the stack. In its setup abilities, and whatever an adapting mastermind does a master strike, it says adapt. This means shuffle the mastermind tactics and randomly put one on top face up. You might randomly keep the same tactic that was previously on top, or it might be a different tactic. It keeps any bystanders it held. Likewise, when you fight an adapting mastermind, you always fight the tactic currently on top of the stack. You ignore all the card abilities and bonuses that are not currently on top of the stack. The fight ability also says adapt at the end, so you put the tactic you just fought into your victory pile, rescue any bystanders, do its fight effect, then shuffle the remaining tactics and randomly put one on top face up. This set includes double-sided epic adapting masterminds. During setup, turn all the tactics to either the normal side or the much harder epic side. Don't change which side is face up when they adapt. Don't use these with schemes that call for mastermind tactics to be shuffled into decks of non-double-sided cards. A very important point. Another don't use this with certain schemes like Master of Tyrants. Hey, thanks so much for the sub. Dot, dot, dot. Scrolling up. Wandering Kumquat, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Very kind of you. All right, and thanks for coming to the stream to watch this stuff. Referencing Undercover from Black Widow from Adapting to Shield, Trefus more sets. Yeah, just throw, throw them all in there. <laughs> all right, game contents, rules insert, and 100 cards. Five new heroes of 14 cards each. Each hero has one rare, three uncommons, five of one common, and five of another uncommon, another common. Two new villain groups of eight cards each. Two new epic adapting masterminds. Each has no mastermind card, just four mastermind tactic cards for one, and six mastermind tactics for the other, and four new schemes. And all the wonderful folks who make this happen. Of course, game design and card set design is Devin Lowe. Senior brand manager is Travis Ray. Associate brand manager is Karen Deng. Director of game development, Bubby Johansson. Senior project manager, Mark, project manager Mark Shaughnessy. Project manager, Rob Ford. Product Development Coordinator, Zach Stevens. Community Coordinators, Richard Bergen, Ryan Martin. Graphic Design, Krista Timberlake. Art Acquisition Lead, Julio Elizondo. Art uh, Direction is Julio Elizondo and Nicole Ruman. Box Art is uh, Tony Silas. Card Art is Simone Ragazzoni, Francesco Maziota, and George Cambadeus. Project Managers is Danny Montejo and Susan Dent. Senior VP of Production Logistics, Suzanne Lombardi. Uh, and play President, Upper Deck Company, Jason Mashara. And Playtesters, Mark Baeza, M Kyle Bingham, J.R. Bontrager, Bo Bobby Covert, Max Dennis, Emily Cross, Alicia Forsberg, Ryan Garcia, Michael Green, Steve Helling, Corey Meese, Eric Persons, Jason Walker, Alex Wigger. Hello to all of you who I just read their names in the chat. Um, now that's it. Let's go ahead and start with it. Real quick, before I go over the cards, I'm going to grab my sleeves. I need to sleeve this as I go. I got my pack of BCW sleeves here on the side. And uh, real quick, oh, this totally fell I was talking. Look at that. How unprofessional of me. So uh, before I go over the cards real quick, let's um, talk about the thing I was going to talk about, which is... I totally forgot. Oh, I'm doing a new bracket. This bracket is the legendary multiverse bracket. I want to know from you, which are the top five franchises of any media at all that are not... They don't have a legendary game yet. Which are the, your top five um, most wanted for a legendary game? Go to the Discord, find the Bracket Battle channel. There's a link there. And uh, submit your choices. I'm going to be going through them this weekend and uh, building the bracket out of the top choices. So um, if you want to check that out. And if you don't know what the Discord is, type in exclamation Discord. It'll take you there. You should be there. You all should be there. Um, all right. Let's go over some of the heroes. Uh, just look at the spoiler. It feels like there was a missed opportunity to redraw the scheme twist art with the Sinister 629. I mean, somebody could do that. Snatch Cat, if you know anybody who makes customs or reskins or anything. I don't know if you know anybody who does that. <laughs> but that would have kept it, uh, that would have kept it. Uh, they, they did keep it, um, identical. Only one scheme in this, uh, set has a uh, green goblin on it. What do you want to see first? What should we do? I kind of want to look at the masterminds because they're so cool. And then we can look at all the heroes. Um, let me filter through these. There's Ravage, 
so hard to find them because they're all different. Okay, we're gonna look at the masterminds here. We'll check out the Alchemax executives and then uh, the enforcers, because that's the order they are in these stacks. And then we'll look at the Sinister Six. All right, there's the False Acer. And set those schemes aside. And uh, after that, if you want to see anything else specific, these cards are so cool, you guys. I can't express to you how much better they look in person. And they looked great in images, too. Uh, okay, I think we're ready there. Let's start with... Um, let's start with the Alchemist Executives. I'm going to start with the one that is... Uh, let's step over here. Going to the bridge. Starting with the one that has the uh, setup rules. Here they are. The first card here is... Uh, Avatar. Oh my gosh, that's blurry. Hold on. Let me, uh, it's going to do something weird here. Hold on. All right, there we go. That's a little better. A little better. It's just the text is very small. I'm going to read it. Avatar CEO of Alchemax is the first tactic here. Always leaves Alchemax enforcers uh, set up. Add an extra hero to the hero deck. Adapt. Master Strike. Put the two highest cost heroes in the HQ into the escape pile. Then Cyber Mod ranged. Each player gains a wound. Adapt. Then fight each other player, puts a non-gray hero from their hand or discard pile into the escape pile. Adapt. Let's look at the other ones, and then we'll look at the epic sides, which I don't know why I'm sleeving these right now, because we're going to have to look at the epic sides. Oh, I guess we'll look at the epic sides immediately. That makes more sense to me. Um, 10 attack on this, 6 VP. The epic side is, what's the difference? 13 attack, Master Strike put the three highest cost heroes in the HQ into the escape pile. Then Cyber Mod ranged. Uh, each player gains a wound to the top of their deck. Adapt. Fight each other player, puts a non-gray hero from their hand to the escape pile, adapt. A lot of these cards, I'm not really going to feel how they work until um, I try using them. So the next tactic here is John Herod, Executive VP. He's got eight attacks. Cyber mod, covert, covert. John Herod gets plus five attack. Master strike, put the two rightmost heroes in the HQ into the escape pile. Then cyber mod, covert. You may pay five attack this turn to expose fake Captain America. There's so much flavor in here. I really got to read more of this. If you do KO one of your heroes, if you don't by the end of this turn, each player gains a wound. After you draw your new hand, adapt. Fight KO two of your heroes, adapt. And then the epic side here. Differences are um, his cyber mod gives a plus seven attack. He has nine base. Uh, you may pay seven attack to expose fake Captain America. And then that says each player gains a wound. This side said same thing. All right, so that's the difference there. Let's flip back to the, uh, whoop, the standard side. It's, there's so much on these card faces. Here's another one on the bridge, on the rooftops here, is Tiger Wild, General of Alchemax Elite. Nine attack, Cyber Mod Strength. Tiger Wild gets plus one attack for each strength card in the escape pile. Master Strike put the two. By the way, the keyword uh, bot is up for these two new keywords, Cyber Mod and a Faded Future, if you want to put in those at any time. Master Strike put the two leftmost heroes in the HQ into the escape pile. Then Cyber Mod Tech. Each player reveals a tech card or discards a card. Adapt. Frantically sleeving down here. Uh, fight. Send a hero from the escape pile under cover. Then adapt. Interesting. All right, gives you some Cyber Mod if you do that. And then Epic Tiger Wild here. Uh, 11 attack gets plus one attack for each strength card in the escape pile. Put the three leftmost heroes in the HQ into the escape pile. Then Cyber Mod Tech. Each player discards a card at random. Adapt. And I think the rest is the same. All right, and the fourth tactic for this mastermind is somewhere. Oh, here it is. It is a Fear Master, VP of the Public Eye. There we go. Seven attack. Fear Master gets plus one attack for each gray hero you have. Master Strike put the two lowest cost heroes in the HQ into the escape pile. Then Cyber Mod Instinct. Count the number of instinct cards in the escape pile. Each player discards that. Many non-gray heroes. This is going to bug the heck out of me. I should tape this on. So this is sticking off halfway. Th uh, this is uh, inside baseball here. It is sticking off my desk in the front. Just far enough for the weight to pull it down. So I need to get a shorter mat or a longer table or some tape. All right. Uh, then Cyber Mod Instinct. Count the number of instinct cards in the escape pile. Each player discards that many non-gray heroes. Then draws a card for each card they discarded this way. Adapt. Fight each other player discards two gray heroes. Adapt. There's so much on here. I'm excited to... Because <laughs> I'm not going to memorize how, how everything works. I'm excited to play it in-game. Because I'm going to forget everything. It's going to be all exciting all over again. All right. Eight attack plus two for each gray hero you have. Uh, what's the differences? So this said Master Strike put the uh, two lowest cost heroes from the HQ to the escape pile. This says the three lowest cost heroes from the HQ to the escape pile. 
Um, I think you discard that many non-gray heroes and draw two cards. And fight each other player discards three gray heroes. Adapt. Was that the same? Or was that different? That was, uh, yeah, one more than uh, the standard side. All right, let's look at their always leads group, which is the Alchemax Enforcers. And uh, we'll put them down here in the HQ spaces. I want to start with the lowest attack one. This is uh, Cyber Nostra. There are, and I can see these right now. They have no other side. Um, there are three copies of these in the villain group. Three attack, two VP. I'm afraid of him. <laughs> um, Cyber Nostra is three attack, Cyber Mod Tech, Cyber Nostra. Is it Cyber Nostra or Nostra? Somebody tell me how to pronounce things. I'm going to get these all wrong. Uh, tech. Cyber Mod Tech. He gets plus one attack for each tech card in the escape pile. Ambush. Put the top card of the hero deck into the escape pile. Wow, there's going to be a lot of maintenance between the victory pile and the escape pile for things for me to keep track of. And you guys know how great I am at keeping track of things, so this should be fun. With no mistakes at all. Fight. Cyber Mod Tech. KO one of your heroes. We've also got uh, Wackoid here. Wackoid's got four attack. Cyber Mod Instinct, Wackoid gets plus one attack. Cyber Mod Covert, 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 Wackoid gets plus three attack. My dice are going to come, come <laughs> in handy here. Ambush, put the top card of the hero deck into the escape pile. Although it will change based on which player it is. Wackoid captures all bias scanners from other villas in the city. If he captures any bias scanners this way, each player gains a wound. Wow, based on certain setups, he could capture a lot of bias scanners that way. All right, next up, we've got uh, Venture. Great name for future corporation character five attack three vp ambush put the top card of the hero deck into the escape pile venture captures a bystander cyber mod ranged venture also captures a non-gray hero from your discard pile fight either ko that captured hero or choose a player to gain it and by the way there's a uh, i believe two copies of each of those yep and then there's a single copy of this last one which is jigsaw 2099 uh, six attack, five VP. Jigsaw gets twenty ninety nine. Gets plus one for each attack for each bias scanner he has. Ambush. Put the top card of the hero deck into the escape pile. Fight KO one of your heroes. Uh, Cyber mod strength. If the if Jigsaw twenty ninety nine had no bystanders, he re-enters the city and captures a bystander for each strength card in the escape pile. Escape. Cyber mod strength. <clears throat> each player gains a wound. A lot of wounds going out. I can see how Hulk's going to be useful if you use him. Wackoid is saver sucks. It doesn't matter if he were to capture four bystanders. It's just funny when a, a single villain has a bunch of bystanders, though. All right, and one copy of him. And that is this mastermind uh, this mastermind group, I almost said, but this adapting mastermind and this villain group. Um, all right, let's put these aside. Let me go ahead and sleeve the ones I didn't sleeve yet. I'll sleeve these guys. And now... Let's take a look at the Sinister 6 2099. So there's going to be six of these. A lot of us wanted a Adapting Sinister 6 Mastermind, and there is one, and that is very, very fun. Um, so the first card here is Electro 2099 on the bridge. Okay. It's so cool there's six of these. I'm not over that. All right. Nine attack always leads any Alchemax or Sinister villain group. So the only Sinister villain group is the Sinister 6. Will there be more in the future? Is that why this is written this way? Hmm. Set up Adapt. Master Strike. Each player discards three cards, then draws a card. Adapt. Fight. You may discard any number of cards, then draw that many cards. Adapt. And the differences on the uh, epic side. Yeah, Travel uh, made that clear. That it doesn't count uh, based on interpretation of something similar in the What If rules. All right, we've got 12 attack. It says each player discards four cards and just then draws a card. Yep, that's discards three cards and draws a card. And this is, you may discard a card if you do draw a card, adapt. And this is, you may discard a number of cards and then draw the, uh, that many cards. Okay, a little more flexibility on the non-epic side, which makes sense. And then we're going to go with attack order. There is some variation in the VP, though, which is interesting. All right, the next one, the first, the lowest attack one is Sandwoman2099. Six attack. Sam Woman 2099 gets plus two attack <clears throat> for each villain in the city. Hold on, I need to hydrate. It matters if the mastermind is robbing a bank, yes. It's true. Master Strike. You may either recruit or attack this turn, but not both. Adapt. I feel like that same thing was written on other cards in different language, and I like this phrasing. It's very, very clear. Fight. The next player may either recruit or attack in their next turn, but not both. Adapt. Okay, plus two for each villain. 
I'm trying to log what that is. Uh, plus three for each villain. Oh, this is the next player may re either recruit or attack in their next turn, but not both adapt. That's a little different. They look so good. Um, what part of the expansion I'm most excited? I'm excited to fight the Sinister Six, 2099, and um, really get a feel for how uh, Cyber Mod works. Uh, don't feed the green set. It really does feel like you are upgrading yourself, and that sounds very exciting. So I look forward to getting the feel of that. With these sets, I, I, I can read the cards all day long, and until I play it, I don't really get a feel of, oh, that's that's how it's supposed to feel. All right, and appropriately on the rooftops, I didn't plan this, but here's Vulture, 2099. I love how he's on the rooftops there. All right, he gets plus attack, oh, seven attack, by the way, six VP, all in the same VP so far. He gets plus attack equal to the highest VP value of any villain in the escape pod, rooftops, or bridge. Master Strike. If there are any villains on the rooftops or bridge, one of them escapes and each player gains a wound. Adapt. Fight. You may move a villain to another city space. If another villain is already there, swap them. Adapt. Let's see if I can catch the differences. On the epic side. Epic sides. Ooh. Plus attack equal to the highest two VP values among villains in the escape pile, rooftops, and bridge. More wounds. If there are any villains on the rooftops or bridge, each of them escapes and each player gains a wound. Adapt. And I think the uh, second part is the same. Doom and Hulk have the best level up feel. They give you a small cyber mod bonus at first, but then a big one to really work for. I'm very excited about that. So much level up. Uh, uh, next one is really fun. Um, I learned about this character. I didn't get to it in the comics, but I was watching a lot of 2099 summaries, and this one stood out to me. Dr. Octopus 2099, who basically is Octopus. Look at that VP. He has 8 VP. I believe... Not only is this the first mastermind who has a different VP value than the rest of the tactics, but yeah, um, I don't think anything legendary has 8 VP. There's a couple of schemes that have higher VP, but this is the only one with 8 printed VP, I believe. I think everybody else goes up to 7. Alright, Doc Oct 2099 gets plus 4 attack unless you played at least 8 cards or a hero that costs 8 this turn. That's a tall order. Uh, Master Strike. Each player discards cards whose total cost is at least 8 for that player or gains a wound. Adapt. Fight. You may gain a hero from the HQ whose cost is at least 8. Adapt. Um, I remember when I was lucky enough to interview Devin, he told me, you know, the 8 thing doesn't really match Dr. Octopus's lore, but how can you avoid using 8? So I'm glad to see it leaned into again here, as well as in the core set and his uh, ally set too. <laughs> That's so much fun. All right, and the epic side is he gets plus 8 attack unless you play at least 8 cards or hero that cost 8. What was it before? It wasn't plus 8, although I'm sure it wanted to be. It's plus 4. Now it's plus 8, it's more 8. Um, each player discards, and the strike is each player discards cards whose total cost is exactly 8 or gains the wound. Adapt. Fight, you get plus 4 recruit, usable only to recruit a hero that costs 8. Is that completely different? Or did I just miss that? Yeah, it's completely different. <laughs> that's so cool. And uh, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And my count, Sinister 6 has 6. So the next one is Venom 2099. So cool. Mm. 10 attack on him. Venom 2099. I, I'm not tired of saying 2099 yet. Okay. Should I, say, should I be saying 2099? No, I shouldn't be saying that. Uh, gets plus minus one attack for each card you have that costs two. Wonder what that means. Master Strike. Each player KOs a card that costs two from their hand or discard pile or gains a wound. Adapt. Fight. You may gain a hero that costs two from the HQ or KO pile. Adapt. Yes, Cathod is 13, Battle has 9, and I think a Korvac is... What is Korvac? I forget what he is exactly. Um, it's not printed though, even though it's printed on the card. So the Epic side gets minus one card, minus one attack for each card you have that costs 2. The Strike is each player KOs a card that costs 2 from the hand or gains a wound adapt. And the second part is, the last part is the same. 13 attack on them. Korvac is also 9, thank you. All right. And uh, I'm out of space, so I'm going to have to go ahead and put this... I have a villain deck space, but it's a little wonky. Because um, you can't see the villain deck, so I'm just going to put it down here. Nope, I'll put it in the mastermind space. Let's, let's move everybody over. Everybody move down. The last one is Goblin. 2099. Yes, it's the Sinister Six, Deadeye. What do you want them to have? Five tactics? Uh, Goblin 2099. 11 attack. 
Uh, gets minus one attack for each bystander in your victory pile. Master Strike. Each player puts a bystander from their victory pile into the escape pile or gains a wound. Adapt. Fight. Each villain in the city captures a bystander. Adapt. And the other side, the epic side. Goblin 2099 gets minus one attack for each bystander in your victory pile. By the way, if somebody... I'll be very impressed if somebody edits this later and does a jump cut of all the times I said 2099. Don't do that. Be a big waste of time. Master Strike. Each player puts two bystanders from the victory pile into the escape pile or gains a wound. Adapt. Fight. Each villain in the city captures a bystander. Adapt. And that is it for the Sinister 6 2099. Oh, no. Uh, because the only other mastermind only has four, like a typical adapting mastermind, there was room for six here, which is super cool. Ah, oh, man. Yes, I agree with you, Dormad. All right, let's go ahead and look at the Alchemax. Um... Oh, they lead anybody. So uh, they can lead either Alchemax group. But uh, we'll look at the false acer of Alchemax because that's the one we didn't look at yet. Starting with uh, the one I haven't sleeved yet. Jumping down. These are really cool. I like the idea of the false acer of Alchemax, the corporation making fake as guardians to, you know, the people used to worship. It's just so cool. The whole story I learned I learned uh, through looking at these cards and watching some videos. The story is very cool. I want to see it all available on Marvel Unlimited. Uh, here we go. Yeah, you do get extra VP from additional tactics. You get more VP in there. What is the total VP of this group, actually? That's a good question. 6, 12, 18, 24... 30, 38 VP for this. Uh, that's pretty good. What's the? Is that the highest number of VP for a single mastermind? Not counting bystanders they might get? Um, yes. The main religion of the 29 universe is Thorites, the cult of Thor. Uh, and they play into that. That's very cool. All right, here we go. Thank you for the water. I needed that. All right. We haven't even got to the heroes yet. Heimdall, 2099. Three attack, two VP, Uruich headed weapon, ambush. Heimdall 2099 captures a bystander. Fight or fail if the rainbow, love that, bridge is empty and Heimdall's Uru enchanted weapons reveal a villain. That villain enters the bridge. When a villain enters this way, shuffle a card from the bystander deck into the villain deck. So a quick swap there. Next up is Loki 2099. By the way, two copies of each of these for this group. Here's Loki, 2099. Three attack, three VP, two Uru enchanted weapons. Ambush. Shuffle a master strike from the KO pile back into the villain deck. That is really cool. Is there anybody who actually does that? Does anybody put master strikes from the KO pile back? I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Until now. Fight or fail. If his Uru enchanted weapon revealed any master strikes, play one of them. That's evil. Escape. Search the villain deck for a master strike. Shuffle the villain deck and play that master strike. With certain masterminds, this can be devastating. Imagine this with Dark Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, Myster I guess Mysterio is a lot. From his strikes. Um, very cool. Alright, next up is Hela, 2099. She's got uh, two Urwinchanted weapons. Three attack, three VP. Fight or fail. A henchman villain from any player's victory pile enters the city. Escape. Each player KOs two henchmen from their victory pile or gains a wound. Um, I mean, that makes sense. Corporate PR is not really paying attention to the lore properly, right? And then we've got Thor 2099. Five attack, four VP. Ooh, wrench into the weapon. Ambush. Each player discards a card that costs five or more or gains a wound. Fight or fail. Put a card that costs five or more from your discard pile at the bottom of your deck. Escape. Repeat the ambush effect. Definitely going to be my favorite way to use Uru intended weapons. All right. That's it. Again, there's two copies of each of these villains in this group. As you can see right there. Worthiness. Yep. In the in the five cost. Now make sure not to miss that. Card that costs five or more. More, more consistent Thor flavor with the worthiness. All right, so that is it for these guys. Let's jump into, we'll do the schemes at the end. Um, <laughs> that's true. Well, let's go over the heroes, I suppose. As good a time as any. Who's ready? We're gonna start with, uh, let, me, uh, let me put these into the piles. Let me take a breath. Again, I will be playing two games. Um, I'll say this once. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I might be able to do a second bonus stream tomorrow to finish the second two schemes I don't play today. I really hope so. 
So I'm not committing to it yet, but if the stream pops up, you'll see it. Okay, let's start with Spidey2099. Starting with Retractable Talons. This is the classic uh, card distribution, so four cards per hero. Here we go, starting with Retractable Talons. Covert, one attack, and a cost of two. You may send this undercover. Cybermon Covert, draw a card. As a geneticist working for Alchemax, Miguel O'Hara oversaw many strange DNA experiments. He never imagined he would become one of them. So like I said, if you have no idea who these characters are, uh, Devin did a great job of putting the flavor text at the bottom of at least one of each card to tell you who these characters are, which is great. Um, Cybermon is new. So with this card in particular, this was clarified in the chat by the playtesters. So you can immediately, when you play this, you can send it undercover and you still get to do the Cybermon effect because when a card goes somewhere else, you still do all the card text that was on it and then it satisfies its own Cybermon requirement. So you send it undercover, then you have a Covert New Victory Pile, which means you make the Cybermon Covert and you draw a card, which is a really neat way to design this. Five of those. And then we've got uh, Venomous Fangs right here. Uh, to attack. Cybermod, Covert, Covert, draw a card, cost of three. Bad Mega Corp managers spent, uh, spread rumors behind your back. Worst Mega Corp managers splice your DNA with the spider. And again, um, just take in that art, especially on the heroes. It is wild. It is amazing. It's so colorful. Not only is this Spider-Man fault not for the two-cost archetype, but rejects it even further by having his only two-cost card be undercoverable. Yep. Uh, good luck assembling the new chair. I do not like assembling if it's a, like a gaming chair. Good luck. Uh, oh, you got the keyword in there. Yep. All right. Um, that is his second common. His uncommon here is a strength card. It is Cyber Silk Webbing. This is a... Uh, if you know me, I always say this. Cards that have three or more printed recruit are some of my favorites. I just love the big recruit number. It does so much for you. Um, and this is one of them. By the way, if I didn't mention, he's spider friends. Shouldn't be surprising given his uh, Spider-Verse associations. And he's a spider. Uh, he's related to Peter Parker in a certain way. Uh, five cost, uh, three recruit. The next hero you recruit this turn goes on top of your deck. Strength, Faded Future, which means you can put it on the bottom of your deck. Uh, 2099 may not be a friendly neighborhood, but it still needs a Spider-Man. I think that's a contender for my favorite flavor text in this set, at least so far. And then finally, we've got the rare. Only one copy of this, of course. This is... Spider Sense Telepathy. Let's look at that art. Look at that background. We don't deserve this. The <laughs> five attack, a cost of seven. Reveal the top three cards in the hero deck. You may send one of them under cover. Put the rest back in any order. And then Spider Friends, you may play a copy of the card you sent under cover that way. So it doesn't feel... I, I almost used the word waste. It wouldn't feel like a waste anyway, but you get to play a copy of it. If you have another Spidey. Now, because you're sending a lot of other ones undercover, you may have you'll have less opportunities to have them than normal, I think, because all these talents are undercover. By the way, the thing I was initially worried about is this set, unlike the uh, Black Widow set, you cannot unleash these cards from undercover, as far as I can tell. So those are gonna they're gonna stay there. So you might have less of them than you normally have. But maybe it doesn't matter. So that's uh Spidey 2099 set. What do you think? Probably going to be one of my favorite spiders so far. He's going to be fun to use, actually, with cards like, uh, with heroes like uh, uh, Scarlet Spider, things like that. All right, who do you want to see next? Shout out in chat. Who are we going over? we got Ghost Rider, Hulk, Ravage, and Doom. I started, I played with mixing them around with Black Widow expansion heroes, and there was maybe some potential there. I can imagine there being potential there, yeah. All right. I kind of want to save Doom. Everybody wants to see Doom. I want to save Doom. I want to save Doom for last because everybody wants to see Doom. Um, Doormat said a Ravage. Let's go ahead and look at Ravage. If you don't know who Ravage is, the flavor text will tell you a little bit. And he's a character created by Stan Lee. He's one of the first uh, 2099 comics. He's a cool character. Yeah, I could see that being used with uh, Yelena pretty well. I, I do feel like bringing these cards out from undercover. So, Or Red Guardian, you know. A lot of coverts going undercover, keeping with the pattern. All right, let's go ahead and look at Ravage. His first common is here. And again, it's got a little bio on there for you. And I'll drink some water first. Thank you. I like how we're almost done with the overview because it is a small box. Helps me out a little bit. Okay, there's, uh, by the way, he is Marvel Knights as well as most of the heroes in this set. Great, I love more Marvel Knights heroes. 
we haven't had a single Marvel Knights expansion um, so far until uh, Midnight Suns. Midnight Suns is all is all uh, Marvel Knights, right? I think so. Unless I'm missing somebody. Um, down to the dregs. Uh, instinct two recruit and a cost of three instinct. Draw a card from the bottom of your deck. As an eco central executive, Paul Philip Ravage believed in the Mega Corpse right up until they mutated him with biohazards and framed him for murder. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. And uh, five copies of those, of course. And yeah, of course, this works great with Faded Future because you draw from the bottom of your deck. This is going to work amazingly with other sets with uh, uh, Throne Artifacts, which is funny, funnily enough, in the same set. Comes from the same set that has Ur and Tinted Weapons, which is in this set. So there's a lot of tie ins with this and with Shield. Here's the second common. It is one of the elusive five cost commons in the game. Toxic Mutations. Strength. Two plus attack. Uh, strength, you get plus two attack and Faded Future. The millions killed by Megacorp pollutants can't fight back. Now Ravage is out to get revenge for every single one of them. Yeah, Ravage is an original 2099 character as far as I can tell. As far as I read, I think that's accurate. All right, so yeah, you do get to... So Faded Future is optional. You could decide not to send this if you didn't want to. Yep, thank you, Wentrog. That's what I thought. Okay, moving on to... Which is awesome. Very happy to see that. Happy to see more. Detect Vibrations. I like how Marvel Knights is the all-encompassing team for like... Street level, lone wolf kind of characters. Um, I think it's for... Um, I think it's for consistency, Mr. Dollar, with the rest of the heroes in this set. Okay, uh, Covert, forward attack. A card with big number on it. Six cost. Reveal the top two cards of the villain deck and put them back in any order. Faded... Has I said Fateful Future? I meant Faded Future if I did. A Dark Destiny approaches. But for whom? I'm trying to think of the implications of this one. This is uh, almost like Danger Sense. But because you can Faded Future this, if you thin your deck, rearranging the villain deck that often sounds very, very cool. And here is the rare. Check out this art. This is uh, over horns and under horns. Ravish 2099. Instinct 3 plus attack. 8 cost. Re reveal the top card of your deck. You get plus attack equal to that card's cost. Discard or put it back. Marvel Knights. Then do the same thing with the bottom card of your deck. That's cool. It reminds me of Skurn, but put there a different way. I also know that the names of these characters are sometimes dictated by Marvel, so that could be part of it. But um, I really don't know. So that's it for Ravage. What do you think of Ravage? Um, probably one of the more straightforward hero sets in this uh, expansion. But it seems like a good support for really anything. Second part is great with Faded Future. Yes, because that's the card's going to be there. I want to try these with Kurth. For Zerkant. <laughs> Hulk next. All right. Let's look at Hulk. Right now. Starting with Rage Incarnate. He sends Wounds Undercover and Cyber Mods off of them, which is very fun. Okay, if the cover says that, then that makes sense. So, Marvel... Look at that art. Marvel Knights, Instinct, 2 plus attack and a cost of 3. Cyber Mod Wound, you get plus 1 attack. Cyber Mod 4 Wounds, instead you get plus 2 attack. Cyber Tech, it's Hulk 2099. Here's what it is. Cyber Tech Gamma Bombs made John Eisenhart a monster. His pain has made him strong. His rage made him unstoppable. Does anybody know if Hulk 2099 is related to Magneto? Because they're both Eisenhart. Has that ever been said? It'd be weird if it was, but I could see it. All right, moving on to Push Pain Under the Surface. Although Magneto has a lot of names, so I'm not sure which one his actual name is. Strength, to recruit. And a cost of four. Hey, look, Hulk with Recruit. Always love to see that. You may send a wound from your hand or discard pile under cover. Strength, you may send a hero from your hand or discard pile under cover instead. This looks like a wonderful utility card. I think somebody mentioned who tested this that this is a very good card. I can see why. Reminds me of Werewolf by Night a little bit. But I like it. Um, and I like it. I mean, I like Werewolf by Night too. Moving on to Massive Gamma Detonation. The uncommon. Right in the middle of the frame there. Okay, cost of six, attack of five. That's a big number. To play this, you must discard two cards or gain a wound, which is not the worst thing in the world with him if you have the other common. Uh, uh, tech, faded future. Sometimes fate bursts through a single explosive moment. 
And yeah, so again, five attacks sent to the bottom of the deck. Uh, it needs co uh, tech support, ha, tech support, um, which means if you're just using Hulk, how do you get the tech undercover? You have to use Hulk to send him or another tech card undercover. Use a uh, push pain to do that. Or use the rare, right? Here's the rare. Cataclysmic energy. Oh no, you don't get to send tech undercover with this. Um, it is a strength card. Yes, there's three Marvelized heroes in this set. It's awesome. For attack, for each player, either send a wound from that player's discard pile undercover into your own victory pile, helping them out, or that player gains a wound. Cyber mod wound. You get plus one attack for each wound in your victory pile. Um, you can actually choose in this one to give the other player a wound if you don't really feel like taking it, which is a little bit of, um, well, you, you don't have to do it, but, uh, reminds me of the villain sets a little bit. That's pretty cool. Look at that art. Okay, that's Hulk 2099. Uh, by the way, for my two games, I'll be using all of these heroes in both games. So I'll hopefully get a feeling for them. Let's put the epic on the epic, the rare on top. There we go. All right. We're going to look at Ghost Rider next, and then finally, Doom. Speaking of the Fantastic Four there. All right, starting with Cyber Spectre, his com one of his commons. It is a tech card. He's also Marvel Knights. This is our third, our second Ghost Rider, right? Yeah, because we didn't see Ghost Rider in uh, Midnight Suns. No, I'm going to be playing two games, Silver Fox. What do you think this is? I'm <laughs> just kidding. I could, I could just unbox it. Who knows? I'm going to get through at least one, hopefully two games. I think I'll do it. All right, here we go. Tech, two plus recruit and a cost of three. Cyber mod tech, you get plus one uh, recruit. Cyber mod tech, tech, draw a card. And I guess we know why Ghost Rider wasn't in Midnight Suns because this exists. Fatally poisoned by the Demonics Megacorp, Kenshiro Cochran imploded his dying brain. Now he stalks the wicked through a cy terrifying cybernetic body. Most of what you need to know about him is right there. Uh, you can keep your discards free from wounds and game attack, yeah. And you got more tech, more tech Ghost Rider right here with great, great uh, card name Hellride. It is uh, tech, two plus attack, and a cost of four. You may send this and a card from the HQ undercover. If you do, you get plus two attack. Cyber mod, tech, tech, tech. You get plus two attack. He's open to hitchhikers. He's a little like Deathlock in that way, but not exactly. Deathlock is somewhere in the middle of that transition, but that's cool. All right, Death Becomes, no, Death Beyond Death is his uncommon, Covert, three plus attack and a cost of five, Marvel Knights. You may KO a henchman from your victory pile. If you do, you get plus two attack and you may do that henchman's fight effect. It can give you some useful KO or whatever other fight effects these henchmen have. Um, there's no henchman in this set, so who knows what you're gonna be using. If you just have the core set, there's some good ones to uh, reuse their effects on. And then finally, the rare. This is one of my favorite pieces of art in this entire set. And that's saying something because all of this art is uh, incredible. Here it is. Infernal Chainsaw, also amazing title too. Uh, it's a tech card, four plus attack and a cost of seven. You may send a card from the HQ undercover. Cyber mod tech, faded future, and you get plus one attack for each tech card in your victory pile. Okay, so get that for a second. So not only do you get, it's a ramp, for each tech card in your victory pile, which you might be able to ramp up really well, but it has faded future, so thin your deck enough, and that means you get to use this rare very frequently. Very exciting. Oh, Hulk's rare is great too. All right, that's it for uh, for Kenshiro here. By the way, if you wanted to des uh, design a legendary legacy adventure path for any of these heroes, they're all new characters to legendary, all new individuals. So go for it. All right. Are you ready for Doom? Trick question, nobody's ready for Doom. But here he comes anyway. First card is Subvert This New Future, Dr. Doom 2099. He is unaffiliated because he's just Doom. This is a range card, two plus recruit, cost of three. You may send this and a card from your hand or discard pile under cover. If you do, you get plus on recruit. In a, word full, in a, word, in a world full of desperate need, what people need most is to be ruled. If that's not a classic Doom quote, I don't know what is. On that first Ghost Rider card, if you have two tech undercover, do you get both Cyber Mod abilities? Um, yes. You do the first one, and then you do the second one. Okay, next up is another one of my favorite card names in this entire expansion, Doom Blast. 
ranged, two plus attack at a cost of three. Cyber mod ranged, you get plus one attack. Cyber mod ranged, ranged, range. Instead, you get plus three attack. The key ingredients are cutting edge cyber tech, ancient sorcery, arrogance, and contempt. That's how you make a doom blast. Had a hint of lemon at the end. All right, rooftops. Flesh craft, no, flesh grafted doom bots. That's that's amazing. I didn't read that title yet. Tech three attack, cost of six. Tech, you may look at the top three cards of your deck. If you do, send one of them undercover and put the rest back in any order. Wow, with all the undercover in this game, there's going to be a lot of deck thinning, I imagine, which is great for um, Faded Future. And finally, ba -ba -da -ba, tear through time itself. A little bit, yeah. Eight, uh, eight cost, six attack. You may send a card from your hand or discard pile undercover. This card is dual of, of magic and science. Look at that. So, uh, and Faded Future, Cyber Mod, ranged range. If you haven't taken any extra turns this game, you may take another turn after this one. Don't play a card from the villain deck at the start of that turn. That's great. This whole set of VP ramp. It sure is. Yes, this is, um, this universe is Dr. Doom from the Heroic Age. So yes, this is Victor Von Doom, but in a different universe, though it is a Victor Von Doom transplanted from the modern day 616 type area of arrow. Um, no, yes. So don't think about it too hard, but that's what it is. Very cool. So Victor Von Doom is playable in Legendary. There's all five heroes. Look at that. What an, what an amazing addition to the Legendary collection. All right, folks. All I got to do is go over the schemes, and then we're going to play a game. And see what happens. I don't know. Maybe another 2099 set is in the future, but... Uh, well, of course, in the future. It's right there in the name. All right, so uh, let's look at all four schemes. Uh, some of these are... Well, all of these look very interesting. And uh, keeping true to how legendary sets usually go, there's some simpler schemes and some more complicated ones. So uh, let's check it out. The first one I'm going to read here is... Uh, what was the what was the most simplest one that I read? It is... Um, pull reality into cyberspace is one of them. So check this out. Move over to the bridge here. Okay. First scheme, set up seven twists representing cyberspace. Special rules, enemies under any cyberspace get plus one attack for each cyberspace on the board, and they can be fought with any combination of recruit and attack. So they get bribe, basically. Twist one to five, put this cyberspace above the rightmost city space that isn't yet under cyberspace. Twist six, put this cyberspace above the mastermind. Twist seven, evil wins. Pretty straightforward. I love using things like Brian. This should be a lot of fun. This is the only scheme, by the way, that has a uh, Green Goblin on there. Sometimes he's taken off to fit the text. So, um, yeah. Not much more to say about this. I like look forward to trying this one. The theme is fun. A lot of cool uh, theme games can be made with a pulling reality into cyberspace. Uh, it's a trope that's used a lot. But it's, uh, speaking of the... Uh, uh, let's go with this one. The foul earth into a polluted wasteland. Wandering kumquat. Uh, statement of the year. <laughs> Here we go. Set up. Add an extra hero. Eight twist representing toxic sludge. Twist. Put this toxic sludge under an HQ space. No space can have two sludges unless all spaces already have one. Special rules. To recruit a hero, you must also pay two recruit for each toxic sludge under it. During your turn, if there is any sludge under the HQ, you may flush the toxic sludge into the river. If you do, then KO all the sludge and the heroes in those HQ spaces and each player gains a wound. Evil wins when the hero deck runs out or there are eight toxic sludges under the HQ and or in the river. So you gotta make an ethical choice whether you're gonna throw sludge in the river or not. I don't really want to make that choice. I'm gonna have to. Yeah, imagine mixing a 1602 and a 2099 set together. That would be interesting. <laughs> Alpha Flight, yes. All right, let's go with uh, the third scheme here. Subjugate, which is a word we've seen in a lot of schemes. I like that. Uh, subjugate Earth with Mega Corporation. Set up, add an extra hero, 11 twists. Twist, put the HQ, no, put the hero from the HQ space under the bank into a Mega Corp domination stack matching its hero class off the board. Do the listed effect for that Mega Corp. 
Strength, Green Globe. Each player discards a card with a Recruit Icon. Alchemax, there's Instinct, Alchemax. Each player discards an Instinct Hero or gains a Wound. Covert, Public Eye. Each player discards two cards, then draws a card. Tech, Demonics. Each player discards a card with an Attack Icon. And Ranged, Stark Fujikawa. A villain from your Victory Palette re-enters the city. Evil wins when a single Mega Corp has three Dominations. Talk about management. I can imagine this being fun with a lot of players. It's going to be fun regardless, but... Uh, one Mastermind and two schemes, add extra heroes. Yes? And uh, here's the last one. Probably the most uh, interesting thematically. Yes, off the cuff is right. Not hating on it, though. Become President of the United States. Set up 11 twists. Special rules. Once per turn, you may stack one of your non-gray heroes next to the scheme to earn 10 million votes for that hero name. If you do, you may also send one of your gray heroes undercover as Secret Service. Twist. If there's a villain in the banker streets, the mastermind vows to crush crime, and you stack this twist next to the mastermind as 10 million votes. Otherwise, you may discard two cards to counter negative advertising, shuffle this twist back to the villain deck, and play another card from that deck. If you di don't discard, stack this twist next to the mastermind as 10 million votes. Evil wins when the mastermind is elected president by having 40 million more votes than the highest voted hero name. Wow, Devin was cooking that day. Hey! Who do you guys want to be president from all the heroes and masterminds and legendary? Who, who would make the most interesting president? Because <laughs> that would be fun to play with this scheme. Yeah, and so Mr. Dollar just mentioned um, it's a Doom reference. Hey, I, I didn't buy it. You did. <laughs> it was on you. Loki is the classic choice. Doom, of course. Those are the appropriate choices. Um, I was thinking of a presidential race between a bunch of ants and a spider queen, but that's just me. All right, hey, that's all the cards in Legendary 2099. So I hope you enjoyed this overview and unboxing. Um, it should be, it's on the Upper Deck website. You can go to uh, the Upper Deck store to get it or uh, your friendly local game store. Otherwise, we're going to end this overview and go right into the gameplay. So if you watch this on YouTube, check out the playlist for more. Um, and thank you very much.